Grace and peace, family. Grace and peace. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. My at hotel. Namaste. Free the land, beloved. Come on in, come on in, come on in. My name is Vicki Dillard, and I want to welcome you to my own channel here at VickiDillard.tv. I am so pleased that you have joined me today. I always like to uh, remind folks, I know you've seen me on other networks and other platforms, beloved, but I am spending time building uh, my personal channel while I'm still on some other platforms, beloved. I'm going to be making some announcements here pretty soon uh, and some important, uh, in addition to some legal announcements and changes, programming announcements uh, that I must make to the public in due course. So I thank you so much for letting everybody that you know know that they can find me uh, going live on my own channel here at VickiDillard.tv, okay? Uh, family, on the count of three, I want everybody to hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, and share, 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 okay? Thank you so very much. Are you ready? Are you ready? On the count of three, everybody hit that thumbs up button. One, two, three, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Share, share, share. I thank you so very much. Like I said, family, I am growing my own personal channel. And I am so pleased that you're helping me do that after spending so many years, so much of my life force, building uh, uh, uh uh, and giving credibility to other large platforms and businesses, it is time that I spend more time on my own. And that's exactly what I have been doing here lately after all these years. So thank you so much for sharing. Be sure to subscribe uh, and thumbs up, thumbs up again. You'll be still seeing me on other places uh, because I like to uh, see my message on multiple platforms, but I'm certainly working to build my own. Who is this jazz planet to my looking like a top model? Uh, let's get it. Thank you so much, precious. Hey, family, thank you all so much for coming in, giving us a big thumbs up, thumbs up, and share, share, share. Now, family, I got to get to where we're going with the quickness. Somebody black talk black to me. By the way, I want to thank all of you all who have been giving to my PayPal and my cash app. I think one of uh, my people put the cash app in the chat. Um, I'll go ahead and put the PayPal in there right now, too. Thank you so much. You all know long before um, the pandemic and before um, some of these other large platforms that have been complaining about losing uh, be, being demonetized on so many different platforms. Your sister with the curly braids and the other platforms that I was on, I was censored and demonetized and some more stuff. So one of the ways that you can contribute uh, to your independent black media who's on multiple platforms because you're here, uh, beloved. Uh, so that's why we're here. Uh, for those of you who enjoy having someone speak for your issues, uh, for those of you who uh, appreciate a, a prophetic voice that goes out in the earth and that's really ship shaping it, in subtle but impactful and undeniable ways, one of the ways you can do that is by supporting me, beloved. Also, uh, I have my upcoming Ancestors webinar where I'm going to be joined by the great mystic Rod Hayes, beloved. You see the condition of the world now, right? You see what's happening with the uprisings throughout the Sahel in uh, on the continent of Africa and some of the West African nations in particular. Yes, you have been seeing what's been taking place, no doubt, for hundreds of years here in the United States of America and our demand for justice and reparations. Yes, you see the onslaught and the uh, anti-Black war that we have been enduring here in these United States of America and America has neither ceased nor desisted her oppression of us. You see what's taking place in Israel and in Gaza. Yes, beloved, you see what's happening uh, with the uh, uh, the dollar. You see what's happening on the global stage. You see what's taking place with uh, climate change. You see what's happening uh, as it relates to the, uh, the, um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the weapons industry. Yes. You see what's happening with um, our people continuously being locked up uh, and targeted by the white supremacist arm, enforcement arm, which is local police. You see what's taking place in our lives you must know that we have to have new world rulers. And I want you to understand that places like the Vatican, because my brother and I ride, he's going to be giving you all some of the specific histories and esoteric knowledge about the fact it's not a religious gathering. So it doesn't matter what you think about the Catholics or what you think you may know, beloved, about it. 
You want to attend this because this has everything to do with you rewriting the blood codes for you and your family. If you care anything about your children and your lineage, if you want to do magic, and that is to say supernatural energy work, don't let that word scare you and stop being silly. Let the word spell. Oh, they said the word spell. Oh, they said the word magic. Please go sit down and stop that. That's low level kindergarten stuff. They're ruling the whole wide world and tearing it up. And we're the original people. And you sitting over here talking about some, they use the word spell. And you acting like you're going to be safe by not getting into none of that when your whole life is a catastrophe. Tell the truth. A whole tragedy. And not just because of what your life looks like individually, but because we have failed to make an impact on our family at large, our community at large, our states at large, our countries at large, the world at large. There's something bigger and greater that you ought to be thinking about. And you're not no world shaker if you're coming on here talking about, well, is that her hair? I don't know about them long nails with your ignorant, you know what? Slowness, this ain't for you. You behind. Your focus ought to be 7-Eleven. Talk back to me. Walmart. That's your destiny. Funny looking self. Family, hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. We on something different. I'm raising up the world shakers and history makers. If that's what you're talking, if that's what you're on, then beloved, you don't want to miss my Sunday, November 12th ancestors webinar. The link is in the chat or go to vickiplanet.com. That's V-I-C-K-I planet.com. Yes, we moved it back just a few days for technical reasons. Uh, Because folks were, uh, were asking, you know, Vicky, is it the 5th or the 12th? Initially, it was the 5th. But we just, for technical reasons, we only moved you back a few days. So get your seat today. Hit the link above. And I can't wait to see you there. Your whole life is going to change. Your lineage is going to change. And when you change, when your lineage change, you're going to see major shifts and breakthroughs in your life, in your dreams, the things that you want to manifest in this world and the worlds to come. This is going to be heavy. This is going to be deep. It's a reason why the Vatican... And world powers know about your powers and still using it today in secret. And then they're sitting in their secret councils laughing at you because you demonize your own stuff. Or you're sitting there talking about, well, yeah, I already know what they stole, but you don't know what to do with that knowledge. What are you doing to actually take over? People be tripping me out about all the stuff they know. We're trying to embody and manifest stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Y'all hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Okay. Let me get to where I'm going, family. Now, Kamala, as you all know, Kamala Harris represents the white supremacist imperialist arm. Not arm, because both sides of the government is that. She represents an unequivocal law member of the imperialist order. That's pro-white supremacy, that's anti-black, pro-oppressive group of people. Talk black to me. Kamala has proved her lom chop. Somebody put L-O-M in the chat. For those of you that don't know, I, I created that acronym many years ago that, rep, that stands for the League of Mammies. The League of Mammies is a group, a sorority as such, <laughs> of black looking women that are strategically placed in certain spaces and platforms to assist the white supremacist agenda and to keep black America down and in check so that she doesn't come up against that imperialist anti-black order. That's what LOM stands for, L-O-M, League of Mammies. Now, Kamala is a member of the League of Mammies. Now we know she's, she says she's black and she age, she's Asian, she going in and out on her blackness. When she's trying to do, you know, when she's trying to cater and bring in numbers for the Democrat Party, then that's when she, you know, emphasizes blackness. And it's cringeworthy to watch. We know that. So out of desperation because of the dismal failure that the Democrat Party is 
Their numbers are constantly dropping. Yes, um, they have been desperate. They've been coming after me. Y'all, I've been hearing, uh, I know Roland recently came for me again. Some people wanted to know why did he single me out again and one other person uh, in alternative black media. I keep trying to tell y'all, uh, and I know some of you all are wondering, why do these mainstream media nobodies used to be part of mainstream media struggling, trying to be relevant, Roland Martin types, and so, so many others. Why do they keep coming for Vicky? Why are they worried about what I'm saying with my laptop and my cell phone? Beloved, I keep trying to tell you it's the power that's in my mouth. It's not your ability to try to be a Vicky copycat. Or you get to say, well, I say the same thing. I talk about the same thing. It, it ain't the same potency, slowness. That's for the haters. Y'all know this ain't for regular people. It's for the haters. Vic said, Roland has a crush on you, child. It's scary. I'm not sure what, what that would mean with that subterranean thing that bounces. Talk black to me. The only thing I it's probably true that we have in common is the color of my dress today. About matches. Somebody put some basketballs in the chair. <laughs> Y'all stop playing. Don't start getting me to talk about the origins. Y'all know I'm a spiritualist. So you know I know where he's from. Now we know we got the underworlds, but there's different dimensions of the underworld. He's from a certain subterranean realm that one little white boy named Charlie stumbled upon when he got lost from his mama in the park one day. Some of you all may or may not know this. I've been on, y'all know, your sister with the curly braids on multiple platforms. So many people know where I'm going with this. Some of you may or may not know. If you don't know, let me hurry up real quick and catch you up to speed. I never like to take for granted if I have new people or people that hadn't, some people don't know I used to be here. Some people don't know I was over there. Some people are just seeing me for the first time here on my channel. So I got to bring you up to speed. So my old schoolers, you all just be patient quickly because I got I, I can't be on here all day. Sometime back, this is, this is the origin of that unidentified rolling object who goes by the name Roland Martin in the earth realm, in the terrestrial realm. So you got your extraterrestrial realm above, you got your terrestrial realm here on earth, then you got your subterrestrial realm. So that unidentified rolling object that's known as Roland Martina in some circles, Rolanda Martina. I have my own book of words that's called the Victionary. Not the dictionary, but the Victionary. When you look at the word Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D, roll, the etymology of the word roll, you see its connection in the English language to the word rotund. Roll and round. Repeat after me, rotund. Roll and round. That gives you a clue to the family he's connected to. Somebody need another basketball in the chat. So this little Karen, this little Becky one day went, you know, her, her, her son, you know, they went to the park and stuff. It was like a forest type park with a lot of trees and a lot of lakes and stuff. Natural lakes and stuff. So the little mama and them, she, you know, she took a little baby out there and stuff. So he could go play. He got lost. She started freaking out. She started screaming all over the place and just so frantic. She went looking for him. So she started running uh, by some of the lakes. She happened on one of the lakes and there she found her little lost Charlie. The young white boy, little, 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 little bitty Charlie. And so she was so glad to see him. She started screaming and hollering. She said, Charlie, 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 where have you been? You scared me. I've been looking for you all over the place. He starts screaming. He says, mommy, mommy. And it was this big, round, burnt orange, gooey thing that emerged from the water. And he says, mommy, mommy, can we take it home? And she said, what is it? Mommy, 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 can we take it home? So because she was already freaked out, you know, she thought she had lost her son. She thought her baby was kidnapped. She was willing to do whatever because she was so relieved. She was overjoyed with relief that she says, okay, we can bring it home, but what would we feed it? She said, what would we feed it? We only have a rock pile at home and dog food. That'll do. <laughs> Talk black to me. That's where Roland came from. So when you feed, when you're raised in a home, of the oppressive class and when 
your daily bread is kibbles and bits. <laughs> It's no wonder the outcomes. This thing is just bouncing and just ambulatory all over our planet. Just a catastrophe. And for those of you who think you're so righteous and tell me, well, Vicky, don't, don't do ad hominem attacks. If you don't get your funny looking step out of my face, let me tell you something. Y'all know I have an extraordinary sensitivity to our people, whether I like it or lump it. I've gone through extraordinary circumstances, all kinds of stuff, so I'm very sensitive to words. But when you show yourself to be an enemy... Y'all know the Vicky Show is the home of the hand claps and the gavel raps. Let me say it again. When you show yourself to be an enemy, you get treated like one. This is a man who came to me first with disrespect and my people first. So when you show yourself to be a rebellious, dedicated enemy to black folks, you get what you get. Now, why did I even get off on, on that? Maybe somebody out there needed to know it so that you're not confused and misled by these things that appears to be human on our planet. Y'all know that the, the, the earth is people by different spirits and stuff. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Why did I even go there? I might talk about it at some point, but I've been keep, I keep getting messages from y'all. One brother even sent me a cash app. By the way, again, thank you all so much for your cash apps. You have really been showing so much support. Uh, somebody sent me a cash app and then the little remarks on the cash app, they said, Roland, better keep your name. On this <laughs> One of my beautiful supporters sent some money, y'all. But when he sent the money, he put it on the, he put it in the memo, Roland, better keep your name out of this mouth. And of course, I heard from folks on Twitter, I heard from some, but Instagram, I had a DM from Instagram and, and, and people on YouTube community page. Y'all know, y'all been reaching out to me. If I discuss his funny looking self, because there's been so many conversations, you all know I'll go there if I deem it to be appropriate in a larger point that I can make. But I'm trying to let you all know that these folks are enemies to black America. Roland has done so much anti-black stuff. So before you come in acting like we're, I'm talking about division amongst real black people, you need to check my record and you need to know who we're dealing with, beloved. Uh, everybody hit that thumbs up button. OK, share, share, share. Enough of that. Family, let me get to where I'm going. Today's broadcast is really about the desperation of the Democrat Party. That's probably why I brought up Roland because Roland is one of the desperate attempts. That He's one of those desperate tools that the Democrat Party, you know, plays with. And really, they've really rejected him. Roland is still trying to, you know, get back in their good graces. And they're just like, you are an abysmal failure. Nobody black nowhere is listening to you. So no, we're not going to give you any money. And my understanding is he was, he did a thing the other day. You know, he's always raising money and stuff, you know, which is fine or whatever. But Y'all so crazy. Thousands of people was watching some of these uh, clips that went viral all over social media. But one of the places was Twitter. Y'all so crazy. Uh, bro, apparently he's raising money. Talking about he's down. I don't know if it's about a hundred thousand dollars or something. Talking about he's got to shut down some of some of the media stuff he claims he's doing and all that. Child. One of y'all said, Vicky, uh, sister Vicky, he gonna blame you for 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 uh, you know, all his his money losses and him constantly having to beg and this kind of stuff. Child, ain't nobody studying his funny looking self. Ain't nobody studying his funny looking self. So let's get off of him for now. Your girl, Kamala Harris. Look at this headline, family. This is from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Your girl, Kamala Harris, has been recently making her way around the HBCUs of the past some weeks ago, a HBCU tour. Now, of course, HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. This is some of the most dangerous campaigning that the Democrats could do when they go after our up and coming leaders. So I'm going to ask you, if you're a mother or father or grandmother or auntie or uncle, whoever you are, you got a sibling or you just know somebody that goes to a historically black college or university. And even if they don't attend a historically black college or university, if you know anybody that's in college or goes to university, you need to be sharing my broadcast with them. They need to be tuned into the Vicky shows because some of y'all ain't radical enough. I'm not sure what some of our young people are doing. Some of you all made a total fool of yourself. And I want y'all to watch this real quick to see where we're going. So the Democrats are so desperate to get their numbers up. Right? All of white mainstream media is sounding the alarm because of the Democrats' most faithful voting bloc numbers have drastically decreased 
and they fear it's going to continue. Now, I plan on doing a broadcast pretty soon where I've got the inside scoop on the fact that some of these black organizations, how they get money and funding. And some of y'all don't know this because you're not attending and watch this. Do you all know that some of some of these uh, uh, black organizations are getting money from the Democrat Party or some Democrat affiliate child? They 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 doing all of these big throwing these big events. Look, and ain't nobody black coming. To <laughs> I got the photos, y'all. So stay tuned for that soon because I'm going to be discussing it. This is right in line with that. So they're desperate. They're trying to throw money to see if the biscuits are still working. They're trying to see if the fish fries are still working. And it's not. So here they're hitting up the schools, right? So out of desperation, they're going after our young people trying to look like that they try, they really care because their numbers are terrible with our young people. Now, family, I want you to watch this clip real quick. And of course, this clip, um, I'm playing this clip under the Copyright Act of 1976 for my broadcast. The Copyright Act of 1976. Y'all watch this. Let me cue this real quick. And while I'm doing it, everybody be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Is this it? Now watch this. Now, how many of you all know The Grio is a print publication that's owned by the black looking Byron Allen? Now, how many of you all know, you all may or may not know this, but The Grio, this black publication blocked me long, long time ago on social media. The same way your press secretary still has me blocked on a couple of her personal platforms. With her working for the government now and having a press secretary Twitter page in particular, it's uh, by law, by policy, it makes it more difficult for government officials to just uh, uh, unilaterally block someone. So it's more difficult now, which is so outrageous. So the Grio, which is nothing some but some Jewy Dewey, pretend black publication, they've been had me blocked a few years ago. So outrageous. The same way some of you all don't know, Essence Magazine has your sister with the curly braids blocked. They're mad at me because a few months ago, Thanks to my grassroots work with you, we effectively helped to force by the attention we gave it, Essence Magazine, to change up the lawsuit against local black businesses that they were suing. That's thanks to us. That's certified bona fide credit. Talk black to me. Their image suffered so bad that they changed the lawsuit because I kept calling their funny looking selves out and you all helped to join in. There were some other little voices that were, dissent, that, that, that were out there dissenting, but it was nowhere near the momentum uh, that we gave. Once it was seeded, once I seeded it, bam, y'all ran with it and we were effective in making them turn. So they got mad at me and blocked me. These are your so-called black publications. And again, you've got to ask them, why do they care? And why do they have their underwear in a bunch over Vicki Dillard? Well, the Grio, with their useless self, they only exist so that the Democrats will give them some biscuits and so that they can get an interview with the White House sometimes. And I think they got some connection now with April Ryan, that black chick that wrote, uh, uh, that uh, Trump, remember when he was in office, he used to always attack the black journalists. Well, now that he's out of the office, they just happen to have access, so they do nothing effective. They're not asking any real challenging, consistent questions. And they let Kamala and Joe Biden off the hook for anything dealing with any substantive legislation for black people. Listen to how the Griot, the Griot is trying to make it look like all of black America loves them now. That's the impression, in my opinion, that they're trying to give. So this whole piece that they did that nobody watched. was about look how they were greeted by the students at Morehouse College. So y'all make sure that your HBCU students get this because I need to talk to some of y'all. Uh-oh. I thought my sound was on. Let's cue the sound real quick. Uh-oh, what's going on with my sound? Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Share, share, share. Watch this. Is this it? How the repeater Watch this. Stage. 
knows that we've been giving them that everlasting word. The Democrat Party has already told all of Black America that they're scared to death because Black voter numbers are down. They've already told the college universities leadership that they're desperate to gin up support, even fake looking support, so that they can have some good clips they can put around the country to make it look like somebody somewhere Black still likes them. Now, let me talk to my students. You better stop that madness. I'm looking for revolutionaries. We're at war. They're murdering you and refusing to give you your reparations, but they're sending billions of dollars to Zionist regimes that's murdering babies. Governments that teach your anti-Black police how to do maneuvers that's, that, that's been alleged, credibly alleged to be responsible for the death or injury of your own black brothers and sisters. Now I'm going to have to reopen my raccoon rehab. I came up with this notion years and years ago, and I talked about this on multiple platforms that I've been on. You all know that when you go to a rehab, somebody that needs to be admitted into one, if they have a certain type of addiction, how many of y'all know that sometimes they get the shakes? They start having withdrawals. That's one of the most uncomfortable moments for them. That's how some of y'all get when you don't have proximity to the white supremacists. You start getting shakes. When they don't give you an Addy bar and a wink and a smile, you start getting shakes. So I'm going to have to throw you out. I had to create this university, this, this, this rehab rather, digital rehab. For some of you all that just have a need for a nearness to whiteness and just, just play the Vicky broadcast all day while I scream and bam my gavel to get you to come to your silly self. That's how you all look sitting there screaming and hollering for an imperialist Kamala Harris. It's not cute that you're getting some kind of degree and that you're in some type of fraternity or sorority and you have nearness to white supremacist imperialist power by and through Kamala Harris. I'm not saying for you to be rude, rude and not have some decorum. I know that you must move with intelligence because you must be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. I know that. But this outrageous screaming, there should have been people there showing out because she's refused to give us our reparations, but they've got billions of dollars to send all over the world for madness and to Ukraine and Israel. Now, I know some of the tour preceded the Israel stuff, but they were still sending billions of our dollars to Ukraine and the Ukrainians come over here and get a type of social security benefit and the Afghans and other legal immigrants, and other illegal immigrants, and the oppressive class still getting all of these benefits and loopholes. They're playing right in our faces, and y'all sitting up here doing this. In the face of your destruction, this is what our young people are doing.
work to do. That's why it's imperative that you don't just tune into the Vicky show and keep it to yourself. It's why you've got to be intentional to share this broadcast of 10 people every day, brand spanking new. It's your job to figure out ways to bring somebody over to your house, cook for them, don't tell them what you're going to do and play the Vicky show. That's your job. And as soon as something go wrong, y'all want to wag your finger at somebody like me and tell us who and what we ought to be talking about, but you ain't sent $10. And you haven't shared nothing. You are out of your mind if you think your open enemy is going to fund the war against you. It's your job to keep the war chest fat. And I'm going to keep saying it. Your job. You're supposed to be thinking, how can you take what I'm saying to you and implement it in real time in your life based on your resources and based on where you're situated in the world and your sphere of influence? Where are the grown-ups in the building? Whoever just said that, Kane, you're exactly right. That's what I wanted to talk about, beloved, is the motto that they're running around the college is saying. You're exactly right, beloved. Kane, you are exactly right. What do I mean? If you look at my post, look at the um, motto that Kamala's going around the tour slogan. Y'all see it? Fighting. For our freedoms, college tour. What freedoms? Well, let me read you what an excerpt from the article. Again, this is from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Vice President Kamala Harris told students she came to Morehouse College on Tuesday to celebrate a generation of young people who, quote, are not waiting for others to take control of what needs to be solved. Harris stopped at the private historically black college in Atlanta as part of a month long college tour. In a 45 minute moderated question and answer session, Harris emphasized the need for voting and reproductive rights and reasonable gun safety laws. F family, while black folks are being gunned down by the state, she wants to talk to you about restrictive gun laws and reproductive rights. This is what they deem as your freedoms. Not reparations, which will give you a letter, level of freedom. Exactly. LGBTQ stuff too. She says, our country is counting on you. She blasted voting laws passed in Georgia that she told students are intentionally trying to make it more difficult for you to vote. There are others who, are, who have suggested that your vote doesn't matter or it won't count. No, Vicki Dillon is telling you we believe in voting, but we believe in abstention to be strategic. We're telling you that with your very black votes, some of you all go to colleges and very black colleges and universities, all kind of other minority folk are over there benefiting off of programs that are supposed to be pro-black. If you had reparations, some of you would not have to go in debt to the tune of 50 and 70 and a hundred thousand dollars in college debt. And most of you know, many of you know, I should say, your degrees, you get jobs in areas that your degree isn't even in while you still running around with debt that you can't even put in bankruptcy, bankruptcy anymore. You, you, you could do that at one point. But under the Bush regime, they changed that. Some of you all don't know that it, you have a constitutional right to file bankruptcy. I said constitutional. Look it up and talk to an attorney. They changed those provisions to make it difficult for the average person to file bankruptcy. 
Who cares if you're going to get these degrees if you're not going to use that knowledge for the freedom of your people? That's nothing to write home about when we're still at war. She's not talking about pushing something substantive. I keep telling you, the reason we're making reparations the number one policy demand is because whether it's crime, disparities, educational disparities, business disparities, there's no metric that cannot be traced directly or indirectly to economic disparities. So when you solve the economic problem or substantially address it, you are substantially addressing most of the other uh, 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 issues that we find ourselves facing, family. All this piecemeal policy, you know, support this over here, support that over there. We're doing this here. We're doing this there. No. Reparation solves a large part of that. that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, for those of you that have forgotten or maybe may not have known or you haven't been following me for years and years and years, Kamala Scamala Harris, she used to be a prosecutor and then she was attorney general in California. It is alleged, credibly so, that she slept her way to the top. I ain't tripping. And she used a powerful black politician to get her start, allegedly, 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 allegedly. <laughs> Amen. But what are you doing there? You threw away the brother and you married you, you know, a white Jewish man. Okay, cool. And now he is the first ever second man of, of, the, of the, the world, of, the, of, the, of America. <laughs> Lord, if that's your business. But Kamala is a big supporter of the Zionist organization, CPAC. Talk black to me, somebody. She's spoken at their conferences, my understanding, a few times. I say CPAC. That's not the one. Israel's lobby. Thank you. APAC. I said CPAC. CPAC is a conservative one. Thank you. So she's letting the powers that be know where she stands on stuff. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes, that's the one it is, not CPAC, APAC. So while she was moving on up, <laughs> she used a powerful black brother. Is it brother Willie? I don't want to bring the brother all the way into it, but the brother's the one who took her to the next level politically. He's the one who got her start. I ain't, I ain't tripping about her sleeping to the top. But she threw him away once she got to where she was going politically, thanks to the brother. Talk black to me, somebody. <laughs> well, when Kamala became a prosecutor, all of you all that are giving, I'm seeing my cash apps just go off. Thank you all so much for your support. Your gifts are blessed. All of them a thousandfold. Quintanetta, G, Keith, Starletta, and Wesley, all of your gifts are blessed a thousandfold. Watch this. Some of you may or may not know this about Kamala Scottmiller Harris, but she thought she was something, boy, when she was a prosecutor. She thought she was something also when she was an attorney general. Well, when it came down to policies that she was backing, do you all know that she was promoting policies to lock up predominantly black and uh, brown parents if their child missed a day or two of school? And then she had the nerve to brag about it. Let me find the clip. Everybody hit that thumbs up button and share. Watch this. I think this is from January of 2010. Not be standing here were it not for the education I received. And I know many of, many of us will say the same thing. 
And I believe a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime. So I decided I was gonna start prosecuting parents for truancy. Well, this was- Did you all hear that? I really need you all to take that in before you start thinking that's a, such a wonderful idea. Imagine being a hardworking mom and daddy and your child, for whatever reason, gets caught up and miss a day or two of school. Your government leaders believe the way to solve that is to lock up mom and daddy, the one that's paying the bills. They believe in making sure that mom and daddy's locked up so that the rent or the mortgage goes unpaid, the car note goes unpaid, and bring all kinds of stability so you don't have clothes on your back and food in your belly. That's her suggestion. Keep listening. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Some of y'all are new and don't know these things. Some of you all love to think that everybody just anti-black. No, you behind, baby. Standing here, were it not for the education I received. And I know many of, many of us will say the same thing. And I believe a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. Look. Well, this was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny to lock up mom and daddy. That's funny to give them a criminal record and to take away their freedom and destabilize their homes. This is what she's plotting. Pay attention to how she thinks that's cute. And by the way, some of y'all don't know that this video is several years old. I mentioned that before. I think it's 2009, 2010. On here it says 2010, actually January 2010. Uh, uh, but when I was looking up something somewhere else, it was a 2009 one. But she's sitting there trying to giggle and impress the, 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 the little secret council that she's sitting before in this meeting. Are y'all hearing me today? Y'all hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. That's right. My sister Aquarius, my moderator, she said, y'all, we got more people in here, but, but everybody ain't hitting that thumbs up button. And frankly, my staff went bananas. They were very concerned because we didn't- Listen, listen, listen. And frankly, my staff went bananas. They were very concerned because we didn't know at the time whether I was going to have an opponent in my reelection race. She thinks that's so cute. And I said, look, I'm done. This is a serious issue and I've got a little political capital and I'm going to spend some of it. Look. And this is what we did. We recognized that in that initiative, as a prosecutor in law enforcement, I have a huge stick. She got a stick. The school district has got a carrot. Let's work in tandem around our collective objective and goal, which is to get those kids in school. So to that end, on my letterhead, now let me tell you something about my letterhead. When you're the DA of a major city in this country, Usually the job comes with a badge. And there is often an artistic rendering of said badge on your stationery. So I sent a letter out on my letterhead to every parent in the school district, outlining the connection that was statistically proven between elementary school truancy, high school dropouts, who will become a victim of crime. Let me stop right here. This woman from India, is so, which India has this caste system. She is power hungry and is bragging about stationery that goes out with her name on it. She starts talking about a big stick she got. I mean, I, I get it. This the only stick I be, as a feminine, feminine, I want to talk about. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no other kind of sticks. God, today, let me leave that alone. It's just I just want to focus on my man, but uh, with that. But other than that, other than the gal, so she bragging about her stick. Yeah, the school districts look hairy. And then, what did she say? Her little letterhead. The letterhead meant everything to her. I'm out. She wanted the world to know I got a letterhead, and it's embossed with an insignia that make me feel like I'm something. Talk black to me. This is a part of their motivation. They're just trying to be a part of the imperialist system. This is from back in the day. This is how she earned her chops. 
and who will become a perpetrator of crime. We sent it out to everyone. A friend of mine asked This she, letter, she sent out the letter to everybody. Called me and he said, Kamala, my wife got the letter. Listen. She freaked out. She brought all the kids into the living room, held up the letter, said, if you don't go to school, Kamala's going to put you and me in jail. Yes, we achieved intended, intended effect. You are sick. That is sick. These are your lawmakers, and this is why she slobs over Joe Biden. This is why they love each other like that, because for us black family, our freedom is non-negotiable. It's not cute, and it's not something that you can just use willy-nilly. By the way, isn't that who she slept with? Allegedly, 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 allegedly. You don't just throw out our freedoms willy-nilly to play with. Family, that's disgusting. I said that's disgusting. Fast forward to some years later when she ran for president of the United States not too long ago before dropping out of the race. She specifically asked about reparations only because we, the real black media, alternative grassroots media, made it an issue. So some of your other more useless black looking media uh, outlets like the Grio started to ask those questions because they knew that it was a big deal with the real, real black grassroots and they knew we had the power to affect the ultimate outcomes of voting, they asked her this question is about reparations. 200 years of slavery. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. And we have to recognize that- Before I keep playing it, don't ever forget how every politician can admit that black folks are at the top, the bottom of every imaginable metric. They acknowledge that white supremacy and anti-black racism and discrimination is the cause of being behind in everything. But when we talk about the solution to right the wrongs, they always say no. They want black folks to keep enduring it. Listen. Everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's so why, she, for example. So she said, recognize that we done screwed over black folks. We stole your labor. We raped, we robbed you. We committed mass genocide against you. We took every, we benefited off of everything you got, legal, illegal immigration, the powers that shouldn't be or keep continuing to benefit off of it. We haven't given you one red penny of reparations. We continue to oppress you. We acknowledge that all of these things are true. And she said, we got to do something about it. What are we going to do about it, Kamala? Proposing the lift act. The lift act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit, which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not. You hear what she said? The lady said, so by default, in other words, you want to give white people who already benefit money too, if they're in that economic uh, bracket, you want to give other people groups that fall into that economic bracket, all these benefits too, and black folks just get help by default. Watch. Particular policy for African-Americans that you would support. Let me, let me, let, let me rewind. Default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy is around poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African-Americans that you would support. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at the, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners, because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this, any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No, because 
So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that benefits only black people. No! 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 I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something just for black people. No! Just for y'all? Slavery happened just to y'all. Convict leasing black holes. You created the America, built it and sustained it. But no! Everybody else got to get some if y'all going to get anything. Don't forget that. Don't forget that when she was running for president, she made it clear she's not doing anything just for us. Don't forget that, family. One more thing I want you to remember. There's so many, there's so much wrong. There's so much that's wrong with her. But I've got to go back because some of you all don't know this history about her. Where is it? Some of you all don't know this history about Kamala Scamala Harris and why we call her Kamala Scamala Harris. Talk black to me, somebody. Where is it at? Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Share, share, share. Family, don't forget to register for my ancestors' webinar Sunday, November 12th. The link is in the chat. If you want to take your lineage to the next level, if you want to begin to remove spells, hexes, and curses, and patterns that you feel that are in your life that are preventing you from moving forward in a powerful way, if you want to be set to become the next ru world rulers when you see the status of the world to know black family. The world has a secret about you that you don't know about yourself. The Vatican knows it, the government knows it, NASA knows it, but you don't know it. Me and my brother Rod Hayes are going to reveal these secrets and, and give you the insight that you need, but also divine ritual activations so that we can take our place in the world. Join us Sunday, uh, November 12th. Yes, I changed it from this upcoming Sunday for a few days for technical reasons. So we just got a few days. Get your seat today. You don't want to miss this cosmic opportunity. The link is in the chat or go to my website at VickiPlanet.com. Watch this. Watch this. Again, there's so much that's wrong with her. But one of the things some of you may or may not have known about her Look at this headline before I even start reading just a little bit of the excerpt. I've been teaching this for many years now. This is old news, but everybody doesn't know it. Did you all know this? Did you all know this about Kamala Harris? When she was AG, did you all know that this was her reality? So when I see black students screaming and hollering like they done lost their minds. Again, I'm not saying that you all needed to be disrespectful. I'm saying that you got to keep this in mind. I'm, I, I'm saying that you can't get caught up in the glory of somebody that has proximity to the White House. Some of y'all didn't know this. This is an old article. But you can't forget this as a Colorado, as California's, excuse me, attorney general, she spent years subverting a 2011 Supreme Court ruling requiring the state to reduce its prison population. The overseeing judicial panel nearly found the state in contempt of court. Vicky, what does all that mean? Let me read you an excerpt and then I'll break it down in layman's terms, which I really don't need to because it's self-explanatory when you hear this part. This is written a few, about three years ago. It says Kamala Harris, a leading candidate to Joe Biden's running mate, repeatedly and openly defied U.S. Supreme Court orders to reduce overcrowding in California prisoners while serving as the state's attorney general, according to legal documents reviewed by the prospect. Working in tandem with Governor Jerry Brown, Harris, y'all listen, Harris and her team filed legal motions that were condemned by judges and legal experts as obstructionists bad faith and nonsensical at one point, even suggesting that the Supreme Court lacked the jurisdiction to order a reduction in California's prison population. For those of you that don't understand all this legal jargon, as attorney general, she was ordered to release nonviolent prisoners because of the overpopulation uh, and the violations that that caused in prisons. Kamala fought to keep folks in prisons. How many of you all know that black folks are disproportionately uh, locked up? Do you know that one of the arguments that they made was that because some of the prisoners are trained as professional firemen and women, I should know because when I was in the belly of the beast, 
I was a professional in some of the stuff that I did. And your government used my labor and contracted with the U.S. government because I worked on a military base for a long time when I was in the belly of the beast. Getting $20 a month. I had a good job when I was in the belly of the beast. Listen, unjustly. The intransigence of this legal work resulted in the presiding judges in the case giving serious consideration to holding the state in contempt of court. Observers worried that the behavior of Harris's office had undermined the very ability of federal judges to enforce their legal orders at the state level, pushing the federal court system to the brink of a constitutional crisis. This extreme resistance to a Supreme Court ruling was done to prevent the release of fewer than 5,000 nonviolent offenders who multiple courts had cleared of, as, pre, as presenting next to no risk of recidivism, that means returning to prison uh, 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 con uh, consistently, or threat to the public safety. Think about this, Black and Asian face woman, as the Attorney General of California, fighting a Supreme Court who's notoriously anti-Black, that does something good for once in their life ordering that fewer than 5,000 prisoners be released. And you got a state's attorney general fighting to demand that they stay in prison to save the state money so that they can continue to use your labor. They were using some of your very black family who were prof professional firemen and women to put their life and limb on the line while they're locked up in prison, getting pennies for their service. Because they know that those very prisoners who are nonviolent, pose practically no threat to the public. If you had to hire them as real as, as, as firemen on the outside, they would actually be able to make a living with those same skills. Parasite, you said, do you mean to tell me that a modern day J. Edgar Hoover sheep's clothing, that's a, that's a good way to describe her. Did you all know that? So do you all understand that just based on these couple of things, this is one of the reasons why she is considered to be anathema to black folks. So when she's doing all this performative stuff now, it's a political rebranding because she knows either you forgot or when she pays you a visit to your HBCU or your church, you're going to start screaming and singing amazing grace. And talking about pass me the hot sauce, please. Who fights against the Supreme Court's ruling? Do you all know how difficult it is? All of you who keep giving, your gifts are blessed a thousandfold. Miguel Sanchez, your gift is blessed a thousandfold. I think somebody else gave too. I don't mean to forget who you are. I don't even know how to pronounce your name. Yelena, your gift is blessed a thousandfold. Thank you all so much. Listen, do you all understand? How diabolical and demonic that you must be when the Supreme Court finally does something that's right. A system that I know. I was fighting petitions in the Supreme Court for civil cases long before I dealt with a criminal unjust case. I was fighting on a federal level, some different issues, state level and county level and civil court. Do you all know how difficult it is to get them to do something that's right and that they decided to release Nonviolent, practically that practically pose zero threat to any body in society. The attorney general was sitting there obstructing it, demanding that they stay in prison. This is Kamala Harris. So when she comes to your churches and your sororities and smile with you, she has been plotting and strategizing for a long time. She's in secret councils and meetings, being a willing biscuit. She might not be opening her legs. Oh, excuse me. Like she did with Brother Willie. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. I ain't tripping. Do what you gotta do, girl. But she does a different type of political prostitution that's much more cynical than the former. It's when she gets into power and uses your votes to do it, only to do the bidding and give benefits to them folks. Somebody say them folks. So do you understand what I'm saying? So when they play with you and tell you, now we got to do a study for reparations. When they tell you after 500 years before America was even formally America. We created the framework for not only an economic boom 
and creating the most powerful country in the world, but we are responsible indirectly for the economic boom that Europe and so many other countries experience. To my college students, quickly, I gotta go. I'm way over. My college students, y'all know I've been quoting, well, some of you may or may not know because I was quoting this on one of the other platforms that I was on. And again, I'm just now starting to rebuild my personal channel. I'm still gonna be on some of the other platforms, but I'm really giving some attention to my own personal YouTube channel. I've been reading from this book, How White Folks Got So Rich. You can get it at NOI.org. On page, you can read this book at lunch and be, you can read the whole book. Page 97, 98. Page 97 is talking about the GI Bill, about white veterans programs. And then the next page is talking about the GI Bill education. Quickly. I'm specifically reading this portion about how white folks got so rich dealing with the GI Bill because my college students, you need to know this because this has to do with how your own black family was screwed over with the education. Those that served and put their life on the line to fight wars to free folks from Hitler that turn around and call us anti-Semitic. That's us. We fought in every war and on both sides of the war because we were hoping for freedom. And while we're in the thick of Jim Crow, we over there trying to save other people that come spit in our face and disrespect us or, and, or exploit us. But I digress. From 1944 to 1971, $95 billion was spent on the GI Bill. It was officially titled the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944. Did you hear what I said? Think about those numbers between the years of 1944 and 1971. Again, it was formerly known as the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944. It later became known as the GI Bill. This money was meant to help World War II veterans adjust to civilian life by assisting in their purchase of homes, the startup of business ventures, and the acquisition of education. Various methods were used to discriminate, discriminate against Black veterans. Those Blacks who could, who could qualify for the GI benefits were steered into menial jobs. In 1946, 80%. 86% of white veterans were referred to professional jobs and 92% of black vets were referred to unskilled service jobs. Refusing those jobs, are y'all listening? Refusing those jobs were grounds for denial of other benefits like unemployment insurance. Y'all see how they screwed over our black family that literally shed black blood, was willing to shed black blood for anti-black America. And if they refuse those menial jobs, they could be denied other benefits. Instead of using overtly racist language in its le legislation, the federal government put the distribution of its GI benefits programs in the hands of racist local governments, a ploy that enabled big white Southern officials to determine who would and would not receive the benefits, just as they determined who could and could not vote. GI Bill for education, it says not for GI bros. Over 2 million World War II veterans attended college under the GI Bill. Think about that, y'all. But eligible Blacks were excluded from white universities and the few small, underfunded, under-equipped Black schools were swamped with tens of thousands more applicants than they were able to admit. 55% were turned away. Mostly white veterans enjoyed the GI Bill's educational benefits. Coupled with assistance from the government to help pay for homes, the educational benefits of the GI Bill made possible for whites, a middle-class lifestyle that was characterized by white collar work, home ownership, and life in the jobs and opportunities rich suburbs. White returning servicemen obtained higher education and moved rapidly into the upper middle class classes. Blacks who were promised that their military service would give them better opportunities were frustrated again. I could read more and move into the next section of building American cities, but I don't have time. I got to go. Somebody said my dad was a veteran, too. Somebody else just said government took it back, took it back from those black men. Black men. You guys got to remember that when we're demanding reparations. You got to remember that I'm giving you all receipts because it was so many laws and legislations that were intended to sabotage black folks. They legislated our discrimination in law after so-called we were free. Don't you ever. 
Shame on those historically black colleges and university students that didn't stand up against her. Again, I'm not blaming everybody for that. I know I got some righteous uh, uh, HBCU students. Well, it was a couple, a year and a half or so ago, I think it was, I had the privilege of addressing uh, several groups of HBCU students for an entrepreneur program that they had. And I was so honored to reach um, a, a brother out of um, Chicago reached out to me and I was able to address some of my youth that way. I'm gonna need to hear from some of y'all. And I'm gonna need you all to make sure that you spread this to all of our black students, whether they're in HBCUs or not, because this ain't revolutionary acts. Your education is not for you to be excited about getting a degree so that you can go work for them folks and not do something revolutionary for your people in whatever way you can. Don't be tricked. It is our young people that ought to be putting a demand on Kamala Harris to do something substantive for your own people. And stop being enamored and preoccupied and distracted with the nothingness of nearness to whiteness when it does nothing substantive for your people. My name is Vicki Dillard, your sister with the Curly Brace. I cannot wait to see you so that you can get the sacred codes that the government knows about you, that NASA knows about you, but that you don't know about you. They're still using your very black magic to rule the whole white world while you sit here and suffer as a people. It's time for some of us to get together and connect with the unseen government so that we can make a difference on earth as it is in the ethers. You can get some of this knowledge on Sunday, November 12th, Sunday, November 12th. Sign up today. Make the investment for yourself for my next Ancestors webinar. Go to vickiplanet.com. The link is in the chat. I can't wait to see you again. Be sure to share the broadcast. Give us a big thumbs up, thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel here. I love you so much. I'm your sister with the curly braids. I bow to you. You are my bliss. I can't wait to see you again.